Does it ever seem strange to you when people shoot commercials like this? Like, I'm so bougie, I eat my jewelry instead of regular noodles like you normal people do? I'll take my noodles, please. Thank you very much. Just a second, just let me finish my noodles, please. Hey guys, it's Gloria. So, we're talking about jewelry again today. I made a video about jewelry a few months ago. In that video, I mostly talked about gold jewelry because I love gold, but a lot of things have changed since then. As some of you may know, I took an image consultant course and I realized gold actually doesn't look good on me. Apparently, I have a cool undertone and I would look way better in silver and white gold. Well, 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 life is full of surprises. I've actually taken some time to update my capsule jewelry collection and in today's video, I'm going to focus on a jewelry that would look good on a cool undertone. If you have a warm undertone, I'll leave you the link to my previous video. Most of the jewelry I talked about in there would look quite good on a warm undertone. If you have no idea what your undertone is, don't worry, I'll explain how to find out in just a second. I know previously I quickly went through how to figure out your undertone in the how to wear color video, but a lot of you were confused, so I'm gonna try to explain a bit better. The first way is the vein test that I've mentioned before. When you look at your veins, if they are bluish or purplish, then it means you have a cool undertone. If they are greenish, then you have a warm undertone. If you have a mix of blue and green, then you may be neutral. That means you're neither warm nor cool. The second way is the white paper test. Just take a piece of white paper, like a printer paper, and put it against your neck, because the color will be more accurate there. If your skin appears pinkish or reddish, then you have a cool undertone. If your skin appears yellowish, then you have a warm undertone. If you can't tell, then again, you might be neutral. The third way is ironically the jewelry test. Basically, you're just comparing whether silver or gold jewelry looks better on you. If you have a cool undertone, then silver will make you look more vibrant and gold will make you look dull. The opposite is true for the warm undertone. If you find that both silver and gold jewelry look good on you, then you could be neutral. That means you can wear both silver and gold. Okay, now I'm going to review to you my updated capsule jewelry collection. It took me a while to collect these pieces, and you'll see I've swapped all my gold jewelry for silver and white gold. There are some materials that are known to look better on a cool undertone. Think about the silvery white materials like platinum, white gold, silver, pearls, and diamonds. Now, I don't have any platinum or diamond pieces. I think I'll save that for my wedding ring, and my future husband will have to get that for me. Don't worry, I'm not getting married to anyone anytime soon. And this long white silk dress I'm wearing is definitely not a wedding gown. It's actually pajamas from Manito. <laughs> anyway, let me show you these pieces. Okay, I do realize I'm still keeping my jewelry in my dinnerware. I'm just too lazy to transfer them. Just look at this as art. Now, let's start with the forever pieces. Once you know what your undertone is, you can start looking into investing in some of these forever pieces because you know they will always look good on you and you can wear them till you get really, really old. Like, you know, when your skin is all messed up but at least your jewelry is still on point. And of course, knowing what looks good on me, all of the forever pieces that I have chosen are made of white gold and pearls. And they are not kept in my dinnerware, they're kept in a real jewelry box. Alright, the first thing I want to show you are these white gold pearl drop earrings. You've actually seen these, I wore them in my summer vlog. These are from Hella's and this part of the video is in partnership with them. All of the pieces are made of 18k gold and the pearls they're using here are Japanese Akoya pearls which are known to be very high quality pearls. You know quality is always important to me and Hella's actually specializes in making pearls. There are also two little diamond accents here at the top. I chose these earrings because the long pearl drop details just make them look very special and they also visually elongate my face. They're pretty lightweight too, so I can easily wear them all day. The next one is this white gold pearl necklace. And as you can tell, it's the same series as the pearl drop earrings. You know, I just like it when things match. Just like the earrings, this necklace is made of 18k gold and Japanese Akoya pearl. And the chain actually goes through the pearl, which makes the design a bit more unique in my opinion. A single pearl necklace is a timeless classic, so you won't ever need to worry about it going out of style. It also goes with pretty much everything, so I think it's a nice piece to have in your personal collection. And guess what? I also got a ring from the same series. I probably won't be wearing everything at the same time on a daily basis, but I like having that option. 
Aside from the high quality 18K gold and the Akoya pearl, this ring also has 14 tiny little diamonds around the band, which makes the ring look quite luxurious. But yeah, depending on my mood, I can choose to wear just one piece, or any of the two pieces, or even all three pieces, and I know for sure they're going to go so well together. I feel like I'm in some kind of luxurious jewelry commercial right now, but in reality, it's just me filming myself. Alright, now let's move on to the everyday pieces. For the everyday pieces, I like going with sterling silver because it's more affordable and it's still relatively durable compared to other inexpensive metals. My most worn sterling silver jewelry are these tiny tiny stud earrings. Uh, can you even see them? These are actually my go-to earrings. I got these from Etsy. They're more for practical purposes because I just need to put something in my piercings. I've worn them everywhere, like in the shower, to the gym, and I've never had any allergic reaction from them. The next one are these thin sterling silver hoops. I love hoop earrings. I think they're flattering on everyone because you can pick different sizes and thickness. These ones are also from Etsy. I got a lot of my sterling silver pieces from various Etsy sellers, so I'll just leave the product links below for you. I chose these ones because they are just the right size for my facial structure, and they're lightweight too, so I can wear them all day without feeling anything. Okay, I also got a pair of chunky hoop earrings because I love how they look, but turns out these earrings have the weirdest hooks. Like, what is this? It's just endless. <laughs> how am I supposed to wear this? I'll probably have to go to a jeweler and have them change their hooks because otherwise I don't know how to put them in my ears. Anyway, let's move on to necklaces. A pendant necklace like this one is definitely a classic. I actually have a similar one in gold but with a different kind of chain. This is a Virgin Mary medallion with satellite chain. Again, I'm not religious, I just like how it looks. I haven't worn a satellite chain before but it looks interesting so I'm just gonna try it out and see how I like it. Next one, I'm pretty excited about this one. Ta-da! A chain necklace. I actually never thought I'd wear a chain necklace, but it became so popular this year and all the cool girls were wearing them, so I decided to give it a try, and when I put it on, I was like, damn, I like it. This one is from a jewelry. It's a Canadian fine jewelry brand that I really like. I bought quite a few pieces from them. I just threw on a t-shirt because a chain necklace would work better with a casual style. I'm still trying to learn how to be more casual, okay? And I think I'm getting there. Now let's talk about rings. A recent addition I got is this boyfriend band. I think it goes really well with the chain necklace. This one is also from a jewelry, and you can see I'm really trying to get this casual look going. I would say this is kind of like my masculine statement ring since it's very men inspired. Next up is the thin stacking ring, and as the name implies, they're for ring stacking purposes. I've got three of them here. These are all from Etsy and they all have different textures. It just gives me more varieties to choose from. I usually only wear them with a statement ring like the boyfriend band for example. Speaking of a statement ring, I've actually got another one. It's my uh, feminine statement ring. This is the croissant dome ring from a jewelry. If you watched my previous jewelry collection video, you probably noticed I have the exact same one in gold. I just love the look of it, so I've got to have another one in sterling silver. Okay, so I actually have one more ring on the list. It's supposed to be a signet ring that looks exactly the same as this one but in sterling silver. However, due to the ongoing pandemic situation, it's been over a month and it still hasn't arrived yet. It's just gonna arrive when it wants to arrive, you know what I mean? I'm used to it by now. Alright, we've covered earrings, necklaces, and rings. When it comes to what I wear on my wrist, I'm still the same old. I don't like wearing bracelets. I prefer wearing watches because they're more practical. And of course, I've got a new watch in silver tone. Well, technically it's silver and gold tone, but I think it has more character than just a plain silver one. This was gifted to me by Daniel Wellington. It's from their new collection. I love the look of this watch. It just makes me seem very powerful, sophisticated, and no bullshit, like just talk to my hand, you know what I'm saying? Now, surprise, surprise, I do have one bracelet, the croissant dome bracelet. You can probably tell this is the same set as the Majori croissant dome ring I just showed you earlier. The gold version of this bracelet used to be in my imaginary collection. So for now, this is kind of like an imaginary member in my collection. Now, it's not just in my imagination anymore, it's in my reality, except it's not in gold but in silver because now I know what's best for me, at least when it comes to choosing jewelry. And that's it for my little silver and white gold capsule jewelry collection. If you're curious about the gold pieces, go check out my other capsule jewelry video. I was actually pretty awkward in that video now that I look back on it. 
Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again next week.